Yeah, so we um, did this study primarily based on um, uh, results of a, of a trial showing that L-Trombopag, when given as a single agent to patients with refractory severe plastic anemia, so patients with severe plastic anemia essentially had failed multiple lines of therapy, immunosuppressive therapy, and really there was no other treatment options for. Uh, when we had used the drug in that setting, we found, surprisingly, that uh, almost 50% of patients, 40% really, of patients had hematologic improvement, and most of them had trilineage, meaning all their blood counts came up, um, they came off transfusions. And so that was a pretty striking finding and led to the FDA approval of l pag and refractory severe plastic anemia. So it was really logical for us to then consider using the drug um, at, for patients who have new onset severe plastic anemia and combining it with the standard treatment for new onset severe plastic anemia, which is horse ATG and cyclosporin. Severe plastic anemia is a rare disease. It's not something that most people have heard of. Most people won't tell you that they have a friend or a neighbor or a family member who's ever been affected by it. Most people don't fully understand it. They tend to think it's leukemia. It's not. Um, but basically, it's a very serious, life-threatening blood disorder in which patients suddenly stop having um, their bone marrow work for them. Their bone marrow suddenly stops making blood. And it stops making blood for red cells. It stops making blood for white cells and platelets. And as you can imagine, this is very serious. And what happens is patients um, um, can suffer very severe consequences of bleeding um, and infections related to these blood counts going down. Uh, and, you know, really um, up until 30 years ago when the standard immunosuppressive therapy regimen was uh, developed primarily at the NIH but also um, in Europe, uh, patients who had severe plastic anemia almost always died. It was really very dire uh, uh, outcomes uh, related to them. And primarily, we know that based on studies in the 1970s. And uh, when, when the immunosuppressive therapy was developed, um, about 60% of patients uh, res could respond to that therapy. And suddenly, things, you know, we, we found improvement, um, really, for the first time in severe plastic anemia. That was in the 1980s. Since then, for the past three decades, um, multiple attempts to improve that regimen, the horse ATG cyclosporin regimen, um, have been made in multiple trials. Um, trials in which we've tried changing out the immunosuppressive regimen with rabbit ATG or Campath or, or um, adding other immunosuppressive agents. Um, and additionally, adding growth factors like GCSF or erythropoietin. And all of those studies were, were really unsuccessful at improving the standard horse ATG cyclosporin re regimen. So, you know, this study where we are actually finally seeing improvements on the regimen by adding l trauma pad uh, is quite remarkable for that reason. The primary results were that, you know, when we, when we looked at patients who we gave, um, and it was really 92 patients that we've enrolled to the study so far, um, and uh, we've, we've, we've given L-Traumapag in, in three different cohorts where we added L-Traumapag consecutively to each, each cohort, and the first patients um, that we gave it to, we gave it starting at day 14 and continued to six months. In the second cohort, we gave it in a, a more abbreviated fashion, and then third cohort, um, which uh, almost all the patients are now valuable. Um, those patients are receiving it starting day one, right away, alongside horse ATG, and we continued out for six months. And if you look at all the cohorts on a whole, the overall response rate is between 80 and 90 percent, and the complete response rate is, you know, 30 to 40 percent. But specifically cohort three, the overall response rate right now is 95 percent, and the complete response rate is about 60 percent. So, you know, it really looks as though this is um, much better than our, our, our prior rates of uh, historic uh, IST, which where we just use horse HG and cyclosporin alone, to give you some reference, the rates for that pretty consistently from our institution, but also um, other trials in Europe and Japan, always showed an overall response rate between 60 and 70 percent. Really, never doing better than 70 percent, and so and complete response rates usually around 15 percent. Um, so to sort of see complete response rates. And, and overall response rates 20% higher um, uh, in this very large uh, um, uh, trial of 92 patients uh, is really quite striking.
This really offers uh, patients with aplastic anemia more options. Uh, you know, we've had options for transplant, but it was never for hematopoietic stem cell transplant uh, for patients, but that was not and has not been an option for all patients. Um, and so really having more options for patients with aplastic anemia is what we think is really going to be, be the take-home message.